Well, hello, and welcome back to Kimmel and Cox, your source for all things entertainment. I'm Keith Cox. I'm joined, as always, by my good friend, Dylan Kimmel. Hey. And if this is your first time joining us, we're glad you're here. Uh, But be sure to go back and check out some of our previous episodes. Uh, We're on episode 10 now. Can you believe it? Episode 10. Wow, we're in the double digits. uh, Yes, already 10 episodes in. That is crazy. We're just rolling right along. Uh, Actually, I have a a little announcement uh, for you guys. Uh, Dylan, as you know, a couple of months ago, I was fortunate enough to be a special guest on another podcast. Hmm. Uh, It's called Peanut Butter Magic, and it's hosted by our friend and fellow filmmaker Brandon Austin, uh, along with his friend Swalo. Uh, it's a it's a really good uh, little podcast. They're actually in season two uh, season right now, two. so so they've been doing mm. this for a little bit. Uh, but uh, Brandon was kind enough to invite me on his show and uh, just to talk to me a little bit about my acting career so far, how I got started, and he just kind of wanted to pick my brain about uh, some different things in the business because him coming at it uh, from a director writer standpoint mm-hmm. uh, kind of like you Dylan yes. uh, he he was interested in, in kind of knowing my thoughts about some different things on the uh, performing side of things and so it's a great interview uh, I really enjoyed it it was a lot of fun mm-hmm. so be sure to check that out it, it is up now on YouTube and Spotify and uh, we'll be sure to include a link down below in the video's description uh, so you guys can go and, and uh, watch that. Definitely inspiring stuff there. Um, very much worth the watch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, great, uh, great couple of guys there. Uh, today's episode, we are going to be talking about the movie Tenet. Tenet. Uh, yes. Which is a, um, it's a very different uh, kind of spin on the whole time travel thing. Mm, we've we've yes. seen a lot of time travel movies over the years, some is... really excellent and some terrible. Uh, but uh, but this was a nice change of pace, actually. It oh it, yeah. Um, it, uh, as I was they... uh, describing it to you um, uh, and to my mom, <laughs> uh, it's kind of like if you were to watch uh, Back to the Future from the point of view of Biff. Hmm. Specifically, uh, I'd say Back to the Future Part Two. Right. Yeah. Because yeah, because there was a lot going on uh, in that movie in particular. Because you had all these timelines that were coming together, uh, and and you know I hadn't really thought about it that way before until you said that. Because I'm like, well, that actually makes a lot of sense. Because if you were looking at it from the perspective of someone who is not actually traveling through time. You're going to see all this chaos going on around you and wondering, like, what the hell is going on here? Like, why is my world suddenly turned upside down? Yeah. Uh, and, and, you know, all of these timelines are crisscrossing with each other. And so this movie, we actually get to see that mm-hmm. uh, played out and and how that m- might possibly work uh, in the real world. Yeah. Um, so uh, the movie was released on September 3rd, uh, 2020. In the wake of COVID. Yes. This was actually, I believe, the first movie released uh, it was. during, yeah. the, during yeah. that, the, the pandemic. Uh, unfortunately, COVID did impact its box office revenue. Yeah, as, as it did with a lot of movies that were released for a while after that. Mm-hmm. Uh, written and directed by Christopher Nolan, my favorite uh, filmmaker, best uh, best known to most people, I would think, for the Dark Knight uh, mm-hmm. trilogy. Which I have to say this: I have to say this. Uh, Christopher Nolan is uh, probably. I mean, of course, I've seen countless movies before this, but it was probably Christopher Nolan. The fact that he directed a superhero movie, Batman Begins, and then the tr- the rest of the movies, right? There. Um, it was that movie in particular because uh, when I was younger, I would pretty much just eat up only superhero stuff, video games, superhero. Yeah, vi- and superhero video games are very, very bad, very, very bad. <laughs> uh, so uh, just to be, you know, just strictly superhero stuff, uh, it was him 
that actually transitioned me into wanting to watch more than just that because there is a lot more if if you are a shut in yes. if you are <laughs> if you're if you're in that zone right now where you're just uh your your world is nothing but comic book movies and stuff like that <laughs> i encourage you get out there and experience more there, of the cinematic world because there's, there's way more so much out there, out there to appreciate yeah, yeah. And uh, it was definitely Christopher Nolan that got me into wanting to uh, observe more and indulge in more than just that. Yeah. Because uh, it was he he brought me in with the superhero movie, and then he he showed me outside of it. Yeah. You know? I, and I think that's a good way to do it. You know, you kind of you kind of suck people in with the the popular stuff, the things that you feel like everybody's going to want to to see and enjoy. And, and then you're like, okay, this guy's really good. You know, he, he, mm-hmm. he you know, he make he's obviously makes a good movie. And so then you want to see more from that director and see, well, what can he do with, with something else like the different genre? Yeah. Um, uh, the movie stars, uh, John David Washington, a uh, son of Denzel Washington, which is, that is also like mind boggling to me because here, here's the funny thing. If you shut your eyes, you swear you're hearing Denzel exactly. Washington. I was thinking exactly the same thing as I was, <laughs> as watching the movie. I was like, you know, if I just close my eyes and listen, you, uh, you would swear it, it was Denzel. Doesn't really look a whole lot like, uh, his dad, but, no, uh, but it definitely, certainly sounds like him. Yeah. yeah. You can definitely tell they're related. Uh, the movie also stars, uh, Robert Pattinson, uh, Elizabeth Debicki, uh, Dimple Kabadia, uh, the uh, ever so talented Michael Caine mm. and Kenneth Branagh. So another really stellar cast uh, in this movie. I mean, Chris Nolan, he he makes he makes the best cast. He ma- like he every movie he does is is like he really crafts a wonderful cast. He knows exactly who is a great actor, and if you're in a Chris Nolan movie, it's it's. It's hands down. You're a great actor. Yeah, um, and uh, and obviously he he uh, wanted to you know work with people that he had worked with before. I which mm-hmm. I assume uh, explains Michael the Kane. inclusion of Michael Caine because Michael Caine played Alfred in mm-hmm. the uh, Dark Knight and movies. He's been in pretty much every Christopher Nolan movie since Batman Begins. Yeah, mm-hmm. and, uh, even even as just a voice in Dunkirk. Mm-hmm. But. Uh, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a good movie. It's it's, it's really uh, enjoyable to watch. Just like you know, nonstop action mm-hmm. and, and thrills and suspense and uh, you know, it, it's like I I spent the better part of the movie trying to figure out exactly what was going on. <laughs> you, you, you won't be able to until the very end. Yeah, and you told me it was going to be like that, so yeah. I was prepared. And but it is. It's 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 a little confusing. Uh, and but uh, as I started, you know, watching, eventually I was kind of putting the pieces together, and I was like, okay, well, I got the time travel aspect of it. That was pretty easy to to figure out. Mm-hmm. But they don't really explain a whole lot. Uh, in the movie as far as like what what's going on you know most movies sort of you know you kind of have some exposition there and mm-hmm. they really sort of set up the action who the characters are yeah. but this is one of those where you're like you're you're trying to figure out uh who the characters are what are their connections to each other and yeah, and this is this is what i like about christopher nolan he does not play the audience as dumb so he will not do exposition the way you want him to. Yeah, he 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 gives the audience the benefit of a doubt. If he he will treat you as if you are smart, and if you're not smart, I am sorry, you're you're you're, <laughs> you're lost. You're out of luck. Yeah, uh, but but that's good. I like you know the, I, I like uh, I kind of like when directors do that when they just trust the audience mm-hmm. that they that they know what's going on and that they can figure this out uh, for themselves. Uh, but but it was it, it was it was a, a lot of fun to watch you know it definitely keeps you hooked in and uh, some some great uh, action sequences in there uh, great uh, great car chase and y- you all will learn uh, as we go along in this podcast uh, I'm a sucker for a good car chase <laughs> you'll understand why a little bit you know like later on down the road some of the things we'll mm-hmm. be talking about 
But yeah, if if you can squeeze a good car chase into a movie, that's you know that's instantly like a, a thumbs up for me. Especially, especially if it's practical. Yes, especially if you don't use a lot of CGI or better Which, yet, uh, no CGI and just do everything. And Christopher practical. Nolan is very very astute about CGI. He will not use CGI uh, if he can help. Yeah, and uh, speaking of that. Uh, uh, another really good sequence uh, in the film involves uh, a 747. Yes. Which... That it, is not a miniature. No, it is not. There's no uh, special effects there, no CGI. Uh, it's it's all done practically, and uh, and I I won't give away the, you know, the sequence there, but it's pretty cool. And, and as I was watching, because I'm usually really good at being able to pick out whether something is done, you know, in camera for, you know, for real mm, or not. Yeah. And as I was watching, I was like, that's a, that's a real plane. Like they are really doing this. <laughs> it's like, that's a, like, that's a lot of money, uh, you know, involved oh, in yeah. that just to do that one scene. And I'm sure they, I'm sure they could only do it once, you know, usually mm, mm-hmm. a, a complicated setup like that. Usually you only get one shot at it. Right. Uh, but yeah, some, a lot of really cool action sequences in there. Uh, so, the the really interesting thing to me about this movie and the way that it sort of turns time travel on its head, and if you I guess if you think about it from you know from a a logical standpoint, I suppose it could work this way in reality. I don't know, but basically, whenever uh, whenever two whenever two time periods are intersecting with each other in this movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, one set of characters is actually moving backwards. Yes. You know, the, the characters, the action, everything going on around them is moving backwards, while the other set of characters is moving forward. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I thought that was a really uh, different kind of way to portray that. And what, what would that actually look like in our reality? It does, uh, it does kind of hurt your brain a little bit. Yeah. There too, <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> it's, it's weird. You're like, you're, it sort of, uh, sort of confuses the senses a little bit. Like as you're mm-hmm. watching, like it's like messing with your brain because it's, and it's really cool the way they did it. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, uh, I'm not sure how they, you know they made that work where they where you could literally have uh you know forward motion and reverse motion Mm -hmm. in the same in the same shot i admit i did not watch the special features so i have no idea yet i should have watched the special features just before this but i i didn't i i failed i failed you i failed you anakin (laughs) i failed you but yeah i uh i that was the one it's like you're almost uh uh, I wouldn't watch the movie uh, if you have a headache or anything like that because <laughs> <laughs> it's going to make it way worse. Because, uh, yeah, it's just, it's sort of, uh, it's like overload uh, for the Pro- brain a little bit. Probably wouldn't do it on acid either. No. <laughs> 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 no, no uh, substances uh, while watching a movie like this, because it will not only impair impair your ability to figure out what's going on, but you're gonna be, you know, you're gonna think you're tripping out or something. Be like, yeah, it's like, no, this is the way the movie is supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, so, like the the basic plot uh, of the movie is uh, John David Washington's uh, character, uh, who is just known as the protagonist. Uh, he is a CIA operative mm-hmm. uh, who is basically trying to take down this Russian oligarch, uh, which is uh, played by Kenneth Branagh. Uh, and and it, it, the, the, again, they, they don't really explain a whole lot about you know what's going on. It takes you a little bit to figure out what his what his role is in this. Uh, but he is recruited by a secret agency that is only known as Tenet, mm-hmm. which is where the, the film's title comes from. And it's and, very interesting, uh, the, the name Tenet, because it is the same backwards and frontwards, which means if... I mean, it, it goes in line with this whole story because there's backwards and forwards motions here yeah, and there. it makes perfect so, sense. I mean, if, if someone in the going through that time travel thing were to say Tenet, it would just come out the exact same. Yeah. And... Uh, and uh, Kenneth Branagh's character uh, Andre Sater is basically he's he's communicating 
with the future. Hmm. And so they're basically wanting to, uh, to, to, uh, to get to the bottom of, you know, some things that he's up to because they feel like, you know, the things that he is doing could be, could be dangerous, uh, you know, could basically put the safety of the world, uh, at risk. Yeah. And, and so they recruit the protagonist to, to go after him and, um, and that's basically the you know the gist of of what's going on in the movie. And then throughout that process, uh, they discover uh, the protagonist, along with his handler Neil, uh, which is uh, Robert Pattinson's character. Uh, they discover this uh, time travel device. Basically, it's it operates like a, a turnstile or kind of like a revolving door. Mm-hmm. You know, when they get inside this device mm-hmm. and, and it turns around. You know, then when they, you know, come out, it's like it inverts everything. Mm-hmm. And, and so, and then, so that's where you get the backwards and, and, you know, forwards and like bullets, uh, bullets will, uh, you, you know, bullets will come, you know, out of, of windows and other objects instead of like going into them. Yeah. It's like literally everything is moving backwards. It's crazy. It does, it does really hurt your brain. Cause you're thinking, wait, th- but it's like, if, if it's that, like, did they, they get? Did they get just get shot, or were they unshot? <laughs> Where did the <laughs> bullet hole come from? <laughs> like, how did the fire, bullet hole get there? You know, uh, fire turns into ice yes. because of the. Well, that makes sense yeah. in a in a way. That does make sense yeah. um, because the interesting thing is is that uh, for uh, this movie and also for uh, also for movies like Avengers Endgame, where time travel was involved, mm. um, what they did was is they actually did talk to uh, scientists, actual people that uh, are experts in like the time stuff and everything. And if time travel were real, this is what it would be like. So uh, it's not, you know, it's not completely. Uh, it is fiction, but it's not uh, completely based on you know ludicrous, right. You know, well, well, I, I think uh, time travel movies in the past have always focused on something that they feel like everybody could more easily understand. Mm-hmm. Like much I, in, more in, fantastical and yeah, you know, in, yeah. in a in an ideal world, if time travel did exist, we would all hope that that it would be the way that we're used to seeing, where literally you could just use some kind of a machine, you know, or mm-hmm. device. And literally, just go back in time, and every everything would still be the same, yeah. except for the fact that you're in a different uh, time period. Well, uh, they did bring up a very good point in this movie: the Godfather paradox. And the paradoxes are so maddeningly confusing. And I'd <laughs> say that because even Back to the Future had to deal with uh, paradoxes. Right. It's like if you if you and basically if you alter the course of history. You know, like if you go back in time and you change something mm-hmm. that happened, how will that look in the future? Does it actually affect, you know, the future? But then, the, yeah. but then they get into alternate, basically alternate timelines, and and that's where that comes in. Is like, mm-hmm. well, no, it doesn't affect, it doesn't necessarily affect your your current uh, future, but it could affect the future <laughs> in in another. Uh, time it's like really it's it's really confusing and crazy to think about i mean that kind of blows your mind but yeah um but yeah it's i love time travel movies though they're really interesting they're really exciting um i guess i guess i'm a sucker for getting really confused (laughs) because i love christopher nolan movies and a lot of them tend to be confusing sometimes uh they they dive really deep into that sci-fi you know, what in the world is going on here? And you don't really know until the very end, which uh, you even mentioned um, earlier before we uh, started that uh, that you saw a little bit of that kind of lingered on to, like, latched on to me when I'm writing some. Yeah, it, it, you can definitely see that um, it, it's a it, like you're just a, your unique sense of humor and just way of, of looking at things and, you know, having characters that are, uh, really unusual mm-hmm. and quirky. And, and so, yeah, there would be a lot of things I noticed in your scripts that would just kind of like suddenly would kind of make you scratch your head and be like, what, 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what is going um, on here? So, so, so that answers my dad's it's like uh, weird in a good way. Yeah, like my dad would uh, had said to me, he's like, "I don't understand your writing." <laughs> he, he he actually said that to me. He said, I, you, "You're really good at all this stuff, but I just don't understand just what's don't going get, on." But you could, yeah. I mean, you could really, you could yeah. probably take that as a compliment. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah. The, it's. Uh, uh, Especially when I know now that, you know, some of my influences, Christopher Nolan being one of them, yeah, you, you probably would get confused. So, so I'll, I'll take it in a stride. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's, you know, I think that's a, a good thing. You know, you want to be different. You want to set, your part, set yourself apart uh, from other people out there. You know, we, you, mm. don't, you don't want to always be making just what's popular. You don't want to pan, yeah. pander to the masses all the time. You want to make I like, films that you enjoy. And yeah, I like else movies understands. where uh, the audience can take it from different points of views. Like a, a like a, one person would view it saying, oh, this movie was all about this, this, and this, right? But then another person comes around and he's like, no, no, no. I thought it was like this. Yeah, right? exactly. And both opinions are completely logical mm-hmm. and completely accurate, and they're both true. Yeah. Uh, you know that that's uh, I think that's what you know movies are kind of meant to do anyway is that you know everybody can come at it from their in, own individual perspectives and they all see it a different way and and no way is necessarily the right way you know mm-hmm. it's it's you see it you see it the way you see it and that's the way you that's the way you enjoy it and that's what that's what makes these discussions uh, so great is because you know, we we can come at it from different points of view, and uh, and you know it's sometimes you can agree on things, and then other times you're like, no, I don't really think that's I don't agree, I don't I don't think that's what's going on here. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, as, as you watch this movie, like looking at it from like a writer director uh, standpoint, mm-hmm. you know, what were some of the things that really stood out to you uh or is there anything that were i don't know if you do that when you watch movies like was there anything that say you were directing this movie is there anything that you would have done differently i don't think there would have been anything i would have done differently uh to be honest with you i probably would have done everything the exact same uh but the if i were to do it i'm no christopher nolan so it probably would end up different um, just just by the person that I am. Uh, the writing, like Christopher Nolan wrote the script himself, and the writing is very, very, um, oh, what's the word? Um, oh, it's very elaborate. Mm-hmm. Um, there, it's very complex. Yeah. And only a genius would be able to write something like this. <laughs> uh, it is... It's one of those things where uh, I'm. It's one of those movies where I'm like, where in the world is he going to go next? You know, because there's, because all of his movies there ends up being some like. All of his movies actually have like, like good scores, like unbelievable scores. The lowest rating he has is of the movie Prestige, and it's seventy one percent. That's not bad. No, all the others have have been like seventy one percent to. Uh, 98 I think and so he his uh, his creativity his uh, presence is uh, very much felt Um, and the thing is is that when he's directing this uh, he is I'm just going through what he might be telling the the actors because he has to tell them, you know, the the actors must be just as confused as we are because his scripts, when he has a script, it is under lock and key. Hmm. So they only get their parts. Like I remember reading something like Michael Caine was on set for only that one day because he only has like one scene and he he, he said, I have no idea what it's about. (laughs) None. <laughs> so, so <laughs> the actors are under secrecy just as much as I'd, I'd assume even the cast and crew. And the, here's the funny thing. Christopher Nolan, Christopher Nolan knows how to keep a secret so well that he knows when someone is keeping a secret. Because I don't know if you know this. So uh, the, they were filming this right when Robert Pattinson was cast as Batman. 
Okay. Yeah. And Robert Pattinson came to uh, came to Nolan and he says, "I gotta go. There is a family emergency. I have to attend." And he looks at him. and He says, "You got the part of Batman, didn't you?" <laughs> he, he, just, he knew. He knew. So, <laughs> and and funny enough, because you know this movie, you know, came out a couple of years before uh, the Batman. And if if you had told me then, if you had told me that Robert Pattinson was going to be the next Batman, based on like watching him in Tenet, I wouldn't have seen it. Like I mm-hmm. I, I couldn't I wouldn't have been able to picture that. Yeah. Uh, and of course, again, I only really knew him, you know, from the Twilight movies, mm-hmm. which I'd only seen like bits and pieces of. But, His performance in this is a lot better, I'd say. Oh, definitely, <laughs> definitely is. But I, but I still, but I but still yeah. didn't necessarily yeah. think that he was at that point that he was Batman material. He just, mm. he, he didn't really have the look. Uh, yeah, this character is a little bit more, um, uh, not not necessarily cocky, but uh, he's a lot more uh, v- vibrant, I guess. Yeah. Um, but you know, but definitely, uh, you know, great performance uh, from him as well. Uh, and uh, Elizabeth Debicki uh, plays Cat Barton, uh, mm-hmm. who, when they're uh, when the protagonist is trying to figure out how to get to Sater, uh, you know, Michael Caine's uh, character, Michael Crosby, is basically he's like a British intelligence officer, and he sort of points him in the right direction, and he suggests going to. Uh, to Cat to get to Sater because uh, she is she is his like estranged uh, wife. I guess she's actually his uh, ex-wife, mm. and so they uh, figure you know get uh, get to him you know by going through her, um, and and all of those performances uh, are are really great. Kenneth Kenneth Branagh is almost uh, unrecognizable in this like he looks like he put on a few pounds uh for this role like i didn't you know, like i didn't actually at first didn't realize that it was him uh, well he's one of those uh actors that is definitely a chameleon um <clears throat> like when you hire kenneth Branagh, you're hiring an actor's actor yeah um he has his background in theater um and like yeah. you said before, the theater is like the birthplace of great actors. Honestly, yeah, it's done a lot of Shakespeare and, and mm-hmm. things like that. And 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 it really, if you can if you can do something with Shakespeare, you can do almost anything because mm-hmm. uh, because you know Shakespeare it, to me anyway, it, it's it's very complex and and uh, I actually did Shakespeare once. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. I played. I played the um, the the what was it? The nurse or whatever in Romeo and Juliet. Oh, okay, okay. I gave her a hunchback. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, af- afterwards, uh, one of the uh, of course this was in school, and then the, one of the classmates says uh, the teacher starts asking about the the nurse or whatever, like what what can we say about it? And then I guess I guess that is the testament of a great actor, everyone. If you end up putting in something, and then everyone's like, they have that, yeah. then then because that's the, what they say. It's like she's a hunchback, and, she, and, and then the teacher's like, only in the Dylan Kimmel production is right. she. <laughs> That's hilarious. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if that makes me a great actor, honestly, but <laughs> certainly makes you certainly makes you a creative one. Uh, yeah. It's like I'm really going to make this character my own. Yeah, but uh, what better way to make her a hunchback? But yeah, uh, but yeah, he's pretty pretty you know vicious uh, mm. in this movie. But it, but yet yeah, but yeah. yet he he has a certain like a lot of villains do. Uh, he does have a certain vulnerability to him, mm. like that. That he's not the uh, he's not the mustache twirling villain. He right. is very complex. He's very broken. Um, we find out later on that he's actually dying of cancer, mm-hmm. and so he. I feel like he might feel he he ultimately feels very alone because uh, if you look at it from his point of view, he feels betrayed by even his love, his wife. Right. 
because he so. because he says at one point in the movie he's like if I can't have you uh, nobody else can mm-hmm. and so it, you get the sense that he he almost feels like everything he has could slip away from him at any moment and maybe that is the the reason uh, why he is the way that he is uh, why he's so um, so angry uh, all the time and because he just doesn't want to lose everything that that he's built up and of course ultimately in the end you know he does uh, he does get uh, kind of get what's coming to him but kind of a brutal death too yeah I was like wow yeah it's hit like, the rail and I know <laughs> I was like, Ooh. <laughs> that's one of those scenes that makes you cringe when you uh, watch it a little bit. You're just like, Ooh, yeah. sure. But I mean, honestly, I was trying to give uh, uh, the villain in one of our short films a very crucial death, but I don't think I, I don't think I pulled it off when I saw this. <laughs> well, it's uh, yeah. I mean, that that was definitely uh, definitely unexpected, you know. And mm-hmm. the way she just kind of, you know, kind of slid him off the slid him off the deck, you know, like a fish, you know, like a dead <laughs> fish or something. It was pretty, it was pretty bad. Oh, and uh, did you notice that they actually tied up the body to the boat when they pulled away? Yeah, I did catch that. I was so. like, wow, man, they're really just, uh, <laughs> that was like a, that was like a last little, uh, <laughs> I certainly hope that body doesn't get hit by the propeller when they yeah. land. Oh, that's it's, a very morbid joke. I'm yeah, so it's, sorry. it's one thing. Yeah. It's one thing to kill somebody, but man, <laughs> You know, drag them behind your boat. That's like a, that's like a last little f you. Like yeah, you know, that's like that's like the kind of people that, you know, I will, mean, will shoot somebody <laughs> and they know they're dead, but then they'll yeah. still put like you know six more bullets in them. I it's mean, like, the reason for that I'd say is because they needed the proof that the body is dead. You know, for yeah. the for the military and everything. So yeah, it makes a lot of sense. But uh, but certainly uh certainly a a really enjoyable uh movie to watch and uh like i said all of the all of the performances are are great mm-hmm. um you know it it's you were you were talking about the the whole thing about the the script you know being so secretive mm-hmm. and yeah the actors not even having access to the scenes other than the ones they were in actually i think that's a good way of of doing things really yeah. like you, like you, every actor kind of has a different method when they're reading a script. Mm-hmm. Now, up to this point, my habit has always been to read the entire script all the way through. Yeah. Like I, I want to read it as if I am watching the finished film. Right. So I want to try to get a sense of the entire story. I want to know about all of the different characters, not just the one that I'm playing. Uh, but I don't know, I don't know what's really better to, you know, in that sense, like as far as getting better performances out of your actor, I don't know if it's better to do it the way that I do. So I have context. And so I know, yeah. or if you only read, cause a lot of actors say they only memorize and, and read the scenes that they're in right. because they, cause they kind of feel like, uh, just like in real life they wouldn't necessarily know anything about uh, these other characters. So if they only, like, so it's, it's sort of like, yeah. you know, you're only concerned with what's going on in your I, world, not I what can, everybody else is doing. I can see doing. it from both sides there. There's pros and cons to both of them, you know, uh, the, the secrecy there. So, I mean, I, I'd say I would, I'm kind of, I'm not very good at being uh, secretive with my script, uh, you've gotten like the full script to yeah. You've always oh, yeah, yeah sent out the full scripts. Um, now for like bit parts, like smaller roles, I actually did only send like yeah. Bam. I mean, if you've only got one scene yeah. in the whole movie, you really don't need to know everything else that's yeah. going on. But so uh, I guess I'm kind of mixed on on both of that. Uh, if you're one of my main actors, then I will give you the full script. If you're not one of my main actors, then I give you just you know your like a, like sides. A side, yeah, but. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess the reason I've always uh, read the entire script is I kind of want to see, like, with as like with regards to the other characters, like, it, is my character connected to mm-hmm. any of these, you know, other characters? Because that helps yeah. to build history and and context for the scene. But then I don't. And know. also, it's, it's also easier to tell if you're actually reading a script that's actually really good that you want to be a part of. That's true as well. 
Yeah, because I think a lot of actors do that too. Mm-hmm. You know, they they read the whole thing because they're like, "Oh, this yeah. is this is excellent." Like I and I think with uh, I think with Christopher Nolan in particular, you're the reason why he can do it is because you're actually signed up to just uh, for a Christopher Nolan movie. Christopher Nolan movies do great. There's not been a, a bad one so far. I mean, eventually there will be. I, I have no doubt. I mean, there's no way you can keep on making no. a good, you know. But um, th- I mean, there's just no way. If if he ends up uh, having like the perfect record of like the best movies all around and everything like that, I'd be mind boggled. Yeah, I don't think I don't think there's anybody out there that's done that. Every everybody's going to whether you're a director, actor, writer, whatever. Everybody's going to have a stinker every once in a while you're just not going to you're just not going to hit it every time you know yeah you're lucky you know most people are lucky if they if they have even one really great uh movie uh in their lifetime but but um but they're signing up to a christopher nolan movie so that that's the big thing is that they're like they're, he's got a pretty good track record we're going to be in a christopher nolan movie so yeah and I, I will say, if I ever end up getting uh, signed by Christopher Dolan at some point, I'd be like, yes, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah. Sign me up for that, for sure. <laughs> uh, but, uh, but yeah, uh, definitely uh, definitely go and, and uh, check out uh, Tenet. It is uh, worth a watch, especially if you like uh, action and uh, sci-fi, you know, because there is a little sci-fi element to it. Uh, with the time travel, uh, and it's a little bit, um, you know, there's the kind of the the spy aspect to mm, it as well yeah, with all yeah. the CIA stuff and everything. So it's kind of got a little bit of that James Bond sort of. It's, uh, it's very interesting because uh, Chris Nolan has has been on uh, the producers of James Bond's list for a very long time, and he always says no. Mm. It's very curious. Why yeah. would you say no? Yeah. It's uh, if if we, if we ever end up doing uh, the James Bond movies, that's uh, that's going to take up at least half a season just talking oh, about, yeah. <laughs> about I, James Bond. I've thought about that. Even the same with the Marvel movies, we yeah. end up doing that. There's, There's just, just so oh, many. Man. Yeah. So I've, I've been thinking about that my, myself. I'm like, oh my goodness, how are we going to do those? I don't know how that's yeah Ooh. going to play out. But yeah, definitely. If you if you like those sort of movies, then uh, you will uh, enjoy uh, Tenet. So. Uh, mm-hmm. So go and check it out uh, when you when you have a chance, and uh, and I don't think you'll be disappointed. But uh, anyway, uh, I think we're just about out of time for today. Uh, but uh, before you go, we just want to remind everybody, as always, to be sure to subscribe, like, and share to our YouTube channel. We will appreciate that so much. Um, and when you do subscribe, uh, be sure you uh, tap that nice little bell icon, ding, and so you're getting uh, all of the notifications uh, whenever new content or episodes are posted. Uh, also, uh, don't forget to check us out on our socials. Uh, we're pretty much on all of the major social uh, mm-hmm. platforms, and we will have those links for you uh, at the bottom of your screen. Uh, as well as uh, down below in the video's description and uh, in the uh, closing credits at the end of every episode. So there's no way you can miss them. Um, And there's plenty of other places where you can catch the podcast as well besides YouTube. You know, we're uh, we're on Spotify, uh, iHeartRadio, Amazon Music, a bunch of other places. Uh, And again, uh, we will have those links for you available uh, as well. Uh, and leave, leave your comments and questions uh, for us. That's, uh, that's the big thing that we're really encouraging people to do right now is to get in on the conversation. Um, and, uh, and, you know, we've, uh, we've heard a little bit, you know, from, from you all here and there. Uh, but, you know, we want to hear more. So, uh, you know, let us know what you think of the podcast. Uh, is there anything in particular that you would like to hear us talk about in future episodes? Um, and, and just, uh, leave your comments about, you know, each week's episode and kind of leave your feedback. What did you, uh, get out of the movie or show or whatever it is that we're talking about? And, uh, you can leave those comments, uh, on our YouTube channel or on our socials. Uh, and you can also email us at Kimmel and Cox at gmail.com. That's our official podcast email. Uh, so, you know, talk to us. We, uh, we'd love to hear from you. Um, and 
Also, uh, be sure to support us uh, by going to our Patreon page. Uh, we've got some pretty cool stuff on there for you. We think it's cool anyway, uh, but it's it's a way for you to get involved in, in a different sort of way and to actually be able to uh, contribute to yeah, you'd the be, podcast. You'd actually be... Um you basically be a producer. You'd be helping us produce this yeah, podcast. Pretty much. I mean, that's what it comes down to. Uh, you know, whenever you're doing any kind of production, it doesn't matter whether it's a, a film or TV show, music video or whatever, you know, there there is uh, production costs involved uh, with with everything, you know, and uh, and so I mean that's that's what they do uh, in the movies. You know, that's what that's what a producer does. The producer basically finds the money or provides the money uh for the production and uh you know and you know right now we're you know we're just being honest you know we're doing this uh out of our own pockets you know everything we're doing which is fine i mean you know we can we can do that but there's always going to be a limit Mm -hmm. you know when when you're when you're when you're paying for everything yourself you're funding everything yourself there's always kind of going to be a ceiling. There's going to be a kind of a cap as far as what we can do in yeah. terms of... We don't actually have the best equipment we're working with here. <laughs> it's, I mean, we, we've worked with the... I mean, it's the best that we can come up with. Right. And, and, it, and it's working, obviously. Yeah. It's working. And, uh, and, you know, and Dylan's been doing a you know, tremendous job with... Uh, with editing each episode and and uh, and adding uh, you know nice little graphics and and clips and all kinds of things. Not just to a make very it more easy f- task, I tell you. I've been yeah. doing it on an iPad, not a uh, not a laptop, not a computer. Yeah. And uh, it's it is it's it's a lot of work. And uh, and you know it, it's you know that we we want to get to a point where you know we are bringing you the most professional, you know, best quality podcast. That's going to keep you guys coming back every week and keep you watching and and uh, and so you know contributing uh, on Patreon is certainly a way that you can help us uh, to do that. Um, next week, uh, next week we are going to be talking about a. I, I don't know if it would be considered a classic or not, but maybe for some it is. Uh, it's certainly cult classic. Let's say cult, cult classic. classic. Yes, yeah. it's mm-hmm. certainly. Uh, it's certainly spoofing a lot of classic uh, oh, yeah. martial arts movies, uh, Bruce Lee movies and things like that. But anyway, mm-hmm. we're going to be talking about uh, Kung Pao Enter the Fist. So you're not going to want to miss that. Yeah, it's going to be it's going to be a lot of fun. So looking forward to that. Uh, but uh, that's all we've got for today. And uh, we certainly hope you'll join us next week. Uh, but until then. Be good to yourselves, and we'll see you next time. You dipstick.